Good morning. I'm Ken Glover from the Affirming Action Group, and today I want to uh, read from you an uh, excerpt or introduction from a uh, radio program, CBC Ideas. Uh, this is just a recent two-part series. I've heard a little bit of it, um, but I haven't listened to all of it yet. It's titled, The Trial of Sir John A. MacDonald. Would he be guilty of war crimes today? He's either a national hero or the architect of institutionalized violence. At a time when there are calls to remove Sir John A. MacDonald's statues and rename schools bearing his name, we thought we'd bring Canada's first Prime Minister to court. We realized the obvious difficulty in assessing the conduct of the first Prime Minister of Canada and viewing his conduct from the perspective informed by what we know today, said former Supreme Court Justice Right Honourable Ian Binney. If anyone can do it successfully, it is the two very experienced and able counsels we have today. Prosecutor John Tillett specializes in Indigenous law and is great-grandniece of Métis leader Louis Riel. I should have said Jean Tillett, not John. There are many crimes that we say were committed by Sir John A. Macdonald's government against the Métis and First Nations, says Tillett. But today we speak only of the charges known in international law as core crimes, that is, rape, assault with deadly intent, and mass murder. This episode is the first of a special two-part series on ideas and zeroes in on the first of the two charges, that what's been called the Reign of Terror on the Métis from 1870 to 1872. The second episode addresses the second charge, the starvation of Indigenous people on the plains. At the end of the second episode, Justice Binney will deliver his verdict. The full indictment reads as follows. First Nations and Métis Nation allege two counts against MacDonald for crimes against humanity. That MacDonald knowingly maintained a reign of terror against our Métis subjects in the province of Manitoba from 1870 to 1872 that resulted in multiple uh, assaults, rapes, and deaths. That MacDonald knowingly withheld food from our First Nation subjects in the Northwest that resulted in thousands of deaths by starvation. The evidence will show that he knew about the violence and he knew about the deaths and he did nothing to stop it, says, Tell says Tillett. We say he went further, he approved of it and encouraged it. The concept of crimes against humanity was developed before MacDonald took office and was first used in 1890 to describe a government's action against its own people. Criminal defense lawyer Frank Ardo stressed that his client has every right to a fair trial and that the more unpopular the client, the more important it is to have fair representation. The law does not make it a crime to be unpopular and it does not take historical debates into proof of criminality, said Adaro. You cannot work backwards from the outcomes and infer knowledge. Adaro does not deny that the Métis and the Bible colony were killed and abused, nor does he deny that thousands of indigenous people starved on the plains. But he says those tragedies cannot be directly linked to MacDonald. There is no evidence that he was interested in slaughter or killing, said Adaro who points out that MacDonald was considered progressive for his time by pushing against popular opinion and initiating a food aid program for Indigenous people. The failures of the food program were not the result of a genocidal maniac. In assessing the evidence, Judge Binney said it is important to keep in mind the following questions. Does the prosecution clearly establish the crimes that happened? If those crimes occurred, who was directly responsible for them? What was the chain of command between those on the ground and those in Ottawa? What did MacDonald know, and when did he know it? Does MacDonald's conduct reach a level of criminality responsibly, criminal responsibility beyond a reasonable doubt? This is challenging to do reconciliation work. It involves looking back at our past, looking at ourselves, looking at our history. I encourage you to listen to this program, cbc.ca slash ideas, uh, and learn a little